Bramos the Wanderer. He's a legend among lizards. The greatest dreamer of them all. The one that has mastered the dark of horror sleep and has found sanctuary amid its horrors. The most inhospitable plane imaginable. A realm of insanity and death beneath a starless black. Picture a maze filled with your greatest fears. Picture haunting that maze forever. That is but the first step into horror sleep. Because if one braves the absolute terrors of nightmare and finds sanctuary there, one is safe even from the void. That's right. Horror sleep is a realm feared by the cosmic menace that is the void. Ideal location for a summer house. Burning void woken. The stink upsets me and I don't know why. Magic at work. Here lies Morinia Grigsby Barflit, died wealthy days after her husband, aged 21. Here lies the body of our bunker old Grigsby, died wealthy and old, aged 47. gated off from the rest. Whoever is buried here must have been important. Here rests the elven hero Halla. He served Lucy and the Divine with great vigor and defended the farmers who feed Reaper's Coast against pitiless bandits. The implements of his heroism shall rest at the site of his victory. Here rests the human hero Garrick. He served Lucy and the Divine with immense skill and slew the necromancers who preyed upon the dead of Stone Garden Cemetery. The implements of his heroism shall rest at the site of his victory. Here rests the lizard hero, Vidya. She served Lucy and the Divine with great dignity and vanquished the strange beasts that arose from the primordial caverns of Reaper's Coast. The implements of her heroism shall rest at the site of her victory. Here rests the dwarven hero Bromley. She served Lucy and the Divine with honor and cast out the demons that plagued the great woodlands. The implements of her heroism shall rest at the site of her victory. Suddenly, the earth churns and buckles upwards in several places. Something, some things, are trying to rise to the surface. God Woken, you must fall. The God King demands it. You must fall so that we may rise. Let your blood quench our roots so we may grow. The covenant shall be fulfilled.
these graves shall be yours now, God Woken.
There is no I death cannot strike for the down. Lord. I am sworn. <laughs> were heroes. What happened to them? And what's this covenant? The heroes of Driftwood lie at your feet. Dead for good this time. Boding. When did heroes turn villains? And what is this covenant? Birds to consume. 
God, it's barbaric. example! The eagle glowers at you balefully, with eyes like shiny little buttons. One manicured and beribboned claw shoots forth to claim the stringy offal before him. Stretching his neck forward, he peers closely at you. Pretty eyes. Eyes that see far. The eagle's own eyes glitter with avarice. We are an inspiration to our people. Master tied them on. Pretty, pretty ribbons. Match my pretty claws. Match your pretty eyes. Peck, peck, peck. The eagle pecks free some choice lump of gristle from deep within the corpse. He swallows it whole, dark blood dripping from his beak and matting the fluffy feathers at his throat. Master died, but Master told me what to do. All my life told me you are what you eat. So I do. I will become the master, unless you are not the new master, are you? We are an inspiration to us. Think me an owl, a wren, a crow. I am an eagle. I know my place in this world. So should you. Leave master and I alone. He ostentatiously fluffs up his feathers and turns back to his sordid repast. The spirit is dressed in tattered ceremonial garb. Eagle feathers tangle in his beard and bird droppings decorate his robes. He surveys the circling flock with evident satisfaction. My faithful eagles work still. They know their duty. They need me not. See my feather fall here, prime among my flock. He won't leave my body till naught remains but bleached bone. Hurts, my dear boy, no. All I feel is pride. My feather fall knows just how to slice and just what to chew. He eats to free me, to free this spirit from its earthly ties. With each peck, I am closer to the Hall of Echoes. We were do you watch yourself? There's a voice whispering promises to the dead around here. Word is that they'll be walking about with flesh on their bones again if they send you to the Hall of Echoes. You're Godwoken, ain't you? You've a certain something about your aura. Don't ask me why. But someone out there's got it in for you, and everyone like you. We died glorious deaths. Two dwarven spirits at loggerheads. In a flash, you are both of them, brother and sister. Your feminine side is a rebel, rising up against the tyrannical queen. Your masculine side is a royalist, loyal to the monarch he loves. As the brother, you rescue your sister from the pikes of the royal guard. Together, you flee across the sea to the melting pot of Driftwood and Reaper's Coast. But in Driftwood, you visit the Lizard. You are the sister, and you know that something is wrong. You climb the stairs to rescue your brother, and find him fighting for his life against the dwarves who would rob him. Both of you die. But your killers do right by their fellow dwarves, and bring you here to lay you to rest. As spirits, you fight for eternity. One convinced that the Queen is a tyrant, the other that your treason was wrong. Watching the birds pick your body clean is almost soothing. At least you know you're doing some good for a creature. And it means that elf ain't getting his claws on my corpse. Not mine specifically, but he creeps from grave to sepulchre, taking what he wants, whatever he wants. A grim expression passes across her face as she looks out over the graveyard. The dead don't rest easy in this garden. Not by half. He lives in the big house by the gate. I ain't about to wander up and ask for a name, mind you. The less I see of him, the happier I'll rest. We're an example! What's this? 
I found something. The plinth of the statue bears a series of deep, circular scratches upon its stone. The statue can be rotated. You cringe at the sound of stone. The sculpture looks... You cringe at the sound of stone. The sculpture looks impossibly heavy, yet turns with little effort. What's this? The headless statue looms over you. Its plinth bears the same rotation scratches as its counterpart. Magnitude shouldn't be cursed to live like this. Can you... Can you dig me up? Well, I used to be... Wait, who did I used to be? I can say with confidence who I am now, at least. A thinker. The likes of which you've never known and never will. Don't worry, there's nothing funny about me. More not for Crispin, a simpleton's idea of a clever man, and a poor man's idea of a rich one. The skeleton tries to brush the dirt from his clattering bones, then frowns. The moistest bits are still stuck in his cracks and crevices. Thanks. You're probably looking for a reward, but I haven't got much. Except, you know, the wisdom of the ages. He pokes a finger against his ossified head. I'm a bit of a philosopher, you see. Not much else to be, what with all that thinking time. Oh, but I don't just go around giving knowledge away like a, a common medium. The skeleton pauses and sighs, then straightens his spine with a clatter. A soul bond will settle it. A battle of wits. Then the cosmos itself will decide who can better face the truth of our own essence. Me or you. A weak soul may not survive the bond, but I'm sure you'll be just fine. Oh, it's easy. We link up souls and share our innermost beliefs. Think of it like an innocent little duel. The winner remains comfortable with their personal truths. The loser... Well, I don't blame you to brush shoulders with me. The dog growls. The dog growls and bears its teeth at you in a wide, unsettling grin. You swear you see a worm emerge from its grey-pink gums, then burrow back in. Come closer. I dare you. He sniffs. He snarls. <sighs> I am death. There's no defying me. The dog's growls intensify and transform into a rhythmic rasp that mimics laughter. You swear you see the ground behind him momentarily churn and tremble. Do not mock me. You know what lies beneath. But I will not allow you another step closer, mute. Chan has already laid claim to it. Ha! She calls herself master. I call her minion. 
Whatever name you choose, it is her hand that will wield it, not yours. The dog raises its head to the stormy sky and howls. The earth beneath you vibrates, a dirge plucked on the strings of a rotting lute. Necrotic troll, you are summoned. Crawl through the gate, the earth opens for thee.